Hi guys, I'm back with another review and today I'm doing a review on Inception, one of my favourite movies of all time. I ain't watched this one for a very long time, probably over five years. Yeah, definitely still a great movie, very complex. So when I'm trying to explain this movie, I'm probably going to explain it in the simplest way possible. And that is because it's basically like, well, because there's many ways to view this movie from the reviews that I've seen over the years and I'm just gonna basically try to talk about the movie as a heist movie but you know with dreams yeah that's the best way I can describe this movie <laughs> basically a heist movie but with dreams kind of like Nightmare on Elm Street but you know a heist instead of trying to fight someone who's trying to kill you <laughs> yeah so yeah let's get started so I guess we're gonna talk about the cast of the movie so there's Corb, he's the main character. The world's best at stealing valuable secrets from the soup, super, I can't even see what the hell that says. Oh my god, <laughs> that thing came anyway. Subconscious and the leader of the literal dream team. As for the star himself, with this wall finally being the one that wins him best actor. Oh wait, this is just talking about, yeah, the actual actor, you know, Leonardo DiCaprio, one of his best movies, I guess, Inception. The Revenant, man, that was the one that actually got him the Oscar, though. I don't know if I'm, you know, pronouncing his names right, but yeah. Aradene, played by Ellen Page, you know, I, I know her, for, you know, for a long time. From the X-Men movies, anyway. So, a college graduate student who serves as the architect of the team and constructs the actual dreams, Page has certainly come a long way from the shenanigans on 2007 Juno which yeah Juno I, a lot of people know from Juno I actually didn't really get to watch that movie properly back when I was a kid because like I said I've been an Ellen Page fan for a long time kind of had a crush on her as a kid kind of still do but yeah <laughs> you know she's in Umbrella Academy right now which is cool season two just went and I just hope we get season three because I'm really enjoying that show but yeah this was like one of I don't, yeah, after, like, other than X-Men, this was, like, the other thing that I was like, man, she's really good in this. Also, we've got the main character's wife, who's definitely the most important part of the movie. Mao, played by Marion Cortland. Cobb's deceased wife, who shows up in the dream world and manifests beyond his control, combine her emotional rage with Leo's, and you have a recipe for on-screen fireworks. Okay. But yeah, she's definitely the most important element to the movie. It's what makes the movie work and it, it's, you know, the main character's motivation. So how much can I actually reveal right now? I don't think I can reveal too much right now. So we'll talk about that, you know, that stuff with the main character and his wife, you know, after this stuff. Because I'm just, you know, introducing the characters right now. So Saito... Is he a terrorist businessman who hires Cobb or the villain who blackmails him? Regardless of how <laughs> it shakes out, audiences will enjoy the Japanese actor's return to the US box office. I don't know if this was like the first thing I've seen this actor in. Yeah, because I've seen him in a lot of stuff afterwards. Was it also in, you know, the Predators movie? In, you know, the third, basically the third Predator movie. Yeah, he was, I think he was also in that as well, or was that someone else? Might be mistaken actors, but yeah. Yeah, he's definitely good in this movie. I saw, see an older version of him in the beginning, which kind of foreshadows what's going to happen at the end, but, and there's a few other things that happen with this character. Yeah, this character is basically someone who's going to, I don't know what he actually does, you know, at the end of the movie to assist, you know, the reason why he joins them, but we'll just talk about that later, so. But yeah, the the actor who's playing him is, you know, Ken Watanabe. Yeah, I've seen him before in a few stuff. So Arthur, played by Joseph Gordon-Levitt, yeah. I first, the movies that I know him the most from are Sin City and, I guess, The Dark Knight Rises. So the point man on Cobb's right hand, responsible for researching targets before jobs, could, could this be... JGL's breakout performance 
his allele in training <laughs> more than just the plot. <laughs> yeah, I definitely enjoyed this actor back in the day. Yeah, it definitely is a part of like the coolest scene in the movie for me. You know, the hotel scene. Like, if you've seen this movie, then you, you know which scene I'm talking about. So, Emmys, played by Tom Hardy. This was like the first movie I seen Tom Hardy in, and I guess I enjoyed his role in this movie. I Me mean, as a fun character. <laughs> I kind of like how he talks as well. A forger who impersonates targets inside the dreams dreamscape, but he's also a non nonsense MI5 fallback who's not afraid to get his hands dirty. Had he should shine his biggest wall yet? Yeah, because he's, he's he's been in a lot of stuff. He, he was even in you know the movie that got. Leonardo DiCaprio at uh, Oscar Revenant he was basically like the villain in that movie he's been in a lot of movies that I like but overall I, I just can't I can't lie to myself he is, he's a great actor but I was never really a huge fan as him compared to Leonardo DiCaprio like I love ne Leonardo DiCaprio but I don't know Tom Hardy just some of his walls that are actually good they don't blow me away that's the only difference between you know Tom Hardy and Leonardo, Leonardo DiCaprio because just about every wall and every movie that I've seen with Leonardo DiCaprio they always blow me away so yeah that's the only difference I guess not counting <laughs> Romeo and Juliet yeah which I had to watch back in high school <laughs> so I've actually so the next actor I'm talking about I guess Cillian Murphy yeah I, I know him from like the Dark Knight movies as Scarecrow yeah so Fisher is like their main goal in this movie and the reason why Sato hires the crew in the first place well basically hires Corb the, the main character Corb and Arthur because they're basically trying to get the secrets from Fisher's father since his father passes away but yeah we're just going to read his you know biography every heist has its target or mark and and this the wait this is and this heir to a business empire is the mark of the crew's big score. The Irishman is a Nolan favourite who's extremely versatile as an actor. Definitely is. Definitely enjoyed him as Scarecrow. I, I like how he was, he was in every single movie as well, in the Dark Knight trilogy. Even though it would have been cool if, well, yeah, rest in peace, Heath Ledger, but yeah, just because there was going to have him you know, in the Dark Knight Rises, but, you know, he passed away. So I feel like in, I feel like instead they decided to bring back, you know, Scarecrow in place of, I guess, Heath Ledger's Joker, since he was actually supposed to make an appearance, like we would have seen him in Arkham Asylum. And then there's the last one I'll talk about. Miles, played by Michael Caine, a legendary actor, Cobb's mentor, former teacher and father-in-law, just how much did he teach Cobb about extraction who knows but it's clear that christopher nolan cherishes the, the screen legend yeah he does especially as alfred in you know the dark knight movies <laughs> yeah so yeah that's kind of the whole cast so i'm just going to talk about the story now and then i'll get to my final thoughts all right so i'm gonna go as fast as i can because i just like i said i don't want to take too long i'm trying to shorten reviews but yeah i still think this might be like 20 minutes but I don't know if this would be the like the well I definitely can't say that because when it comes to TV reviews, unless I split them, I feel like Angel will be the final long TV review. Uh, it's definitely not gonna go over an hour. I'll definitely say that, but yeah, that might be the final long TV review because I might split it in parts. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do, especially with Supernatural from season one to fifteen. <laughs> talking about that, that's gonna be a hard one. Man, I I really wish I had someone to talk about Supernatural with. Who knows, maybe in the future, when I finally review the show, I might actually find someone who's a big fan of Supernatural like me. But yeah, let's talk about Inception. So basically, well, I'm going to talk about, yeah, I'm going to talk about spoilers now. So, spoilers. So basically, his wife, and I guess the husband, Cobb, they basically end up in a limbo, in a dream world. Because I guess they, because the rules in a dream world is... If you die in a dream, you always wake up, but if you're like in a proper deep sleep, which they were, you kind of end up in like in limbo, so you'd be trapped there. But I guess they had each other, and they actually kind of built, built a world of each other. But in limbo, it doesn't seem like, I feel like, it feels like time's not really going 
that long. But for them, it was like 50 years or something. To think 50 years has gone in like, I don't know how many hours or minutes. But that was basically, that's how it felt like for them, in their mind. And when, I guess the wife, wait, how did it go? Because I don't think the wife wanted to leave. And to leave, like, I guess Leonardo Lina DiCaprio had to do something. And since this is not something that they reveal until the end of the movie, he, he basically creates incep Inception to his wife. So she's like the first person that he puts Inception to, other than the main target in the movie, Fisher. Who they put into Inception. Because Inception works where it kind of has a dream over a dream. Well, a dream in a dream in a dream, basically. Three dreams in, you know, one big thing that's going on. And that, that's basically the whole movie and everything that they actually do. Yeah. But they basically find themselves in a place like that, even though it's a kind of bit different, yeah. <clears throat> it's, it's more very deep to reach. And it's kind of the way... The only way they could get out is if he planted something in her mind that would help him actually break out. But when they actually do break out, the wife isn't really the same. She's kind of thinking that the re the reality that they're living in isn't real. So she was planning to like possibly, because you know, this this couple actually have you know kids. So I think she was trying to harm them and kill herself at the same time, because she thinks the real world is not the real world, and you know. He tries everything to get the kids away from her. And I guess the doctors still thought that she was sane somehow. So she was definitely being smart. And then, like, when it gets it gets to the moment where it's their anniversary, and then, you know, that's when she's, like, planning to jump out the window. And, you know, Cobb's trying everything to stop her from doing it. Yeah, he truly tries a lot, even to say... Like, think of the children and everything, but she still jumps. Yeah, and then we get that heartbreaking scene. Yeah, just Leonardo's performance in that scene, man. Yeah. Yeah. And I guess he feels guilt because he's the one who actually planted the idea in her mind that when she basically walked up, like, this reality isn't real. So, yeah, because it was the only way they could actually escape Limbo. And this is what it led to, yeah. So for the whole movie, he wants to try... Well, he's basically forced to work with this person who hires him, with his, you know, with his friend Alpha. So that, And he has to, like, assemble a crew, you know, which has each of the characters that I talked about. <clears throat> I guess the first one he goes to... Well, he basically talks to his, I guess, his old mentor. And then that's when they get Ellen Page's character, since she's the one who creates the, I guess, the ar architecture of the dreams. And then they get, well, oh, they have Alpha, so, yeah, he's already a part of the team. It is like a few people who they get, you know, Tom Hardy's character. He's the one who can, he's really good with imagination. Because they need, like, certain people who can actually deal with the dream and what it, what it falls at them, basically. There's also a few other rules that I didn't really say. So basically, if you're inside someone's dream in this world, and then, like, because in this world you can actually go in other people's dreams if you're nearby the person, but then, like, there's something in your dream that can tell if someone else is in a dream, and then they try to get rid of that person who's in a dream by basically killing them, but... You know, when, it, when you basically die in the dream, like I said, you wake up. <clears throat> but man, when they get later on in the story and they actually get in Fisher's mind and you, we basically know the whole plan where they're trying to make three layers of dreams. So a dream within a dream within a dream. And with that many dreams, that's extremely dangerous. Like you could either end up in limbo or a coma, which is like the worst thing that can happen. So, yeah. But yeah, to get to Fisher and to find out his secret since, you know, his father basically died and there was a clue to what that secret actually was. But, you know, it's not until they actually get into his mind and go for all these dreams to actually see what it actually was to them. 
because like Fisher's father, like it sounded like his last words was, was that his, he was disappointed in him. But yeah, it was actually meaning, meaning something else, not like not that. And that's what we find out in the end anyway. But yeah, let me talk about the actual worlds that they're fighting in. So when they first go into the dream, once they actually get Fisher, because they basically find out that he has like a route that he goes that's like a long airplane ride, and they basically get on it and trick him and stuff. Because their plan is to trick him enough to where they can find the secrets that he's hiding of his business, I guess. To give to the, the employer who actually gets injured. And it's and each time they go in each different dream, you can see that he's injured in every one of them. Because if you actually die in limbo, you actually don't wake back up. <clears throat> so yeah. When I actually get deeper into the dreams, you know, things are more dangerous. Like they could permanently die, be in limbo or, you know, coma. And he like it's just messed up that Cobb doesn't actually tell the team that, because he thought it was gonna be like a simple job. But there was some intel that Arthur didn't get, to you know, cause like they get attacked by this highly trained unit, and this is from this is probably like from Fisher's mind as well. And then you just see like a train on the world, in on the U New York world, because there's what there's New York in the first dream, doing some hotel, which is a part of my favorite scene. That's the second dream. Then the third dream is in some snowy area where the secrets are being held, which, you know, they eventually get to. Yeah, definitely the hotel area is my, my favourite. He's also the one who's, like, making sure they're in the right place when they need to wake up. Because to wake up someone in a dream, I guess you would have to, like, make them feel like they're falling to actually wake up, which is a scene at the beginning which... Oh, yeah, I have to say, like, this movie has amazing visuals. Probably the best visuals in any movie for me. Still to this day, I guess, after we watching it, after all these years. Yeah, seeing the city, you know, going up and stuff. Like, the scene at the bottom left, which is my favourite scene. Yeah, there's just, there's just so many scenes, man. <laughs> yeah. Just a perfectly made movie. But yeah, they basically at the end get Fisher's secrets. And then there's like a there's a scene where people people are not really sure, like, and it's been argued for probably like a decade at this point. But when they actually get out the dream, because it gets to a scene where he actually confronts his wife with all the guilt that he's had from his wife. Because in each dream, she she seems to be a threat in every dream that he's in. And it seems like that was gonna affect the mission as well. And it kind of does. And it seems like they kind of fail the mission when, you know, Fisher gets shot by his wife. But she's actually holding him hostage when he gets to the place where his wife is. <clears throat> Since he actually makes it back to the world that they created, that I spoke, that I spoke about earlier. Yeah. And when he gets to that point... I guess he's. I guess he says to his wife that that he'll stay, and then you know. I guess Ellen Page's character gets the gets Fisher, and then that's when we get to the scene where in the third dream in the story in the story place, that's where he finds out what his father actually meant, and then we see that I can't remember what you call that windmill toy, but he had something on it important, and then they basically get the information that they need, and they basically you know complete the mission. But then there's the, the ending, like, it's confusing, like, from how they end it, did he actually wake up? Because, yeah, it seems like the others woke up, but did Leonardo, did Leonardo DiCaprio's character actually wake up from his dream? Or did he actually never wake up? Because this company that he was forced to basically be blackmailed by, there was going to make sure that it doesn't look like he did those murders because I don't know if I missed this but his wife actually left a letter after she died saying that he's responsible for what happened to her and yeah he just would have been in trouble if he sticked around so he had to leave his kids and in the end he finally gets to see his kids again but in that scene you, you kind of see the thing that was planted 
it's, that's basically the inception thing that was planted in the wife. And it makes you think, is the ending actually real? Because when it's, I guess if it stops spinning, because when it stops spinning, does that mean that it's not real? But yeah, just, I kind of get confused right now. Because <laughs> like I said, it's a complex movie. But yeah, if, I, if I've left out anything, yeah, we can talk about it in the comments because I don't want this review to be too long. Yeah, it's still like a 10 out of 10 movie. If you've never watched it before, I highly recommend it. And when I could even explain things the best because this is a very complex movie. And I was trying to explain it in the most basic way as well as a heist movie because there's many ways to explain it. But yeah, maybe I could try to review this in the future again. It's, it's a very hard movie to review because it's very complex. But yeah, if there's any questions or things you want to talk about with the movie, I'll leave it down below. I'll also put a question, a pinned question, at you know, in the video comments. Like, how do you think the movie ended? Did you think it was all a dream or was it actually was it actually in reality and he actually got to see his kids again? And yeah, that's probably where I'll end it. But yeah, this movie definitely had a great cast, a great plot. That it still gets argued to this day. Kind of like The Shining, basically. Yeah. Because that ending with that movie too, yeah. Like, yeah. There's just a lot of questions for that movie too as well. <laughs> Which I did mention in that review too. But yeah. Definitely a legendary movie. Still in my top 10 movies. And I kind of argue which is actually my top 10 movie. I do say Infinity War. And it, and it used to be The Dark Knight. Yeah, it's just... It's, my favourite movies always change, what I'm trying to say, from movies that I've seen for my whole life, so, you know, maybe one day I can actually do a top 10 list, and it's actually not going to change, because I haven't been able to do a top 10 list yet, because my, my favourite movies always change, that's the only problem, you know, there's always some that stay the same, but they tend to change a lot, but yeah guys, that's my review of Inception, I would cover more, but if you want to talk more about this movie, we can talk about it in the comment section, because you yeah, have to go now. But yeah, guys, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.